In an era defined by information, we stand at the threshold of a new computing revolution. For decades, we've relied on machines that think in zeros and ones, solid binary steps through enormous problems. Yet what if we could harness the rules of the quantum realm, where a particle can be here and there, now and then, simultaneously? Welcome to the world of quantum computing, the promise to solve problems no classical computer could ever dream of tackling. The challenge to control the unpredictable. A quantum computer isn't just a faster version of what we have, it's a wholly new beast. Instead of classical bits that are either zero or one, quantum computers use qubits capable of representing both zero and one at the same time, thanks to a phenomenon called superposition. Through another quantum effect called entanglement, qubits can be correlated in ways no classical bits ever could, allowing computations to unfold in complex parallel universes of possibility. Imagine a maze with millions of possible paths. A classical computer would trudge along, testing each path one at a time, potentially taking centuries. A quantum computer, however, can explore many paths simultaneously, collapsing on the correct solution in a fraction of the time. The implications are staggering, from factoring immense numbers in seconds, shattering current cryptographic systems, to simulating complex molecules for drug discovery. The potential uses of quantum computing are seemingly endless. The seed of this revolution was planted in the late 20th century. Pioneers like Richard Feynman famously suggested that to simulate nature, governed by quantum laws, we would need a quantum computer. In the 1980s, Paul Benioff formulated quantum mechanical models of the Turing machine. Charles Bennett and Yuri Menin added to the theoretical bedrock, and it was David Deutsch at Oxford University who framed the universal quantum computer concept, defining a machine that could run any computation a classical device could, plus infinitely more. As the theory matured, the question shifted from can we conceive of a quantum computer to how on earth do we build one? This leap from theory to hardware would prove to be one of the greatest challenges in modern engineering. Classical computing relies on ever-shrinking transistors etched onto silicon. For half a century, Moore's law, predicting a doubling of transistors every two years, held true. But we are now approaching quantum limits of miniaturization. Electrons begin to tunnel through barriers as circuits shrink, making it impossible to reliably control the flow of current. The cost of pushing silicon-based computing further up the performance curve grows astronomical. At this frontier, classical computing stares into a fundamental wall. You cannot keep scaling down forever without quantum effects spoiling the party. Ironically, these same quantum effects that trouble chip makers are the key ingredients quantum computing harnesses. This growing realization in the early 21st century catalyzed a global race toward quantum computing technology. Anticipating a future beyond classical scaling, leading nations and tech giants poured billions into quantum research. IBM, Google, Microsoft, Intel, NTT, as well as emerging quantum companies like IonQ and Regetti, all jockey for position in what may be the next big tech revolution. If quantum computing achieves its full potential, it won't just transform business and science, it will alter global power balances. The ability to quickly solve problems that stump classical computers, like breaking widely used cryptographic codes, poses a strategic advantage. The US and China are locked in a quantum arms race, while the European Union, Japan, Finland and others cultivate their own RD ecosystems. South Korea has recently passed legislation to boost quantum tech signals no one wants to be left behind. But what exactly is a qubit? Unlike a classical bit, a qubit is a quantum system, an electron spin, a photon's polarization, a superconducting circuit's current direction that can hold a superposition of states. To function as a qubit, certain stringent conditions must be met, known as DiVincenzo's criteria. These include a well-defined quantum system that can represent zero, one, or both, the ability to reliably initialize it into a known state, long enough coherence times to perform operations before it decoheres. A universal set of quantum gates to manipulate qubits, the capability to measure the state without destroying all the information. Any failure in these criteria makes building a practical quantum computer incredibly challenging. Top contenders for qubit implementations include superconducting qubits used by IBM and Google, requiring temperatures near absolute zero. Trapped ions, Single atoms levitated in vacuum by electromagnetic fields controlled by lasers. Photonic qubits, leveraging properties of photons to encode quantum information, easing potential networking. 
um, spin qubits in silicon, potentially integrating with existing semiconductor infrastructure. Each path has pros and cons. Superconducting qubits are easier to manufacture but suffer from shorter coherence times. Ion traps offer longer coherence but are tricky to scale. Photons are great for communication but harder for computation. The race is on to find a scalable solution. Classical computers yield a definitive answer. Run a calculation, get a number. Quantum computers, however, often provide a probability distribution of outcomes. Running the calculation multiple times and analyzing the results statistically finds the most likely correct answer. It's a radically different approach. Shaw's algorithm could factor large integers exponentially faster than classical methods, threatening RSA encryption. Grover's algorithm offers a quadratic speed up in searching unsorted databases faster, but not infinitely so. Not all problems see exponential speed ups. Some do, which is enough to shake the foundations of cryptography and computational complexity theory. Our digital world relies heavily on cryptographic algorithms that are extremely difficult to break with today's computers. A fully realized quantum computer could demolish current public key cryptography in a heartbeat by factoring large numbers or solving discrete logarithm problems rapidly. This scenario, known as the quantum apocalypse, motivates the search for quantum resistant algorithms. At the same time, quantum cryptography, like quantum key distribution, QKD, offers perfect security based on quantum laws. Any eavesdropper would inevitably disturb the system, alerting the communicators. Thus, quantum computing both threatens and reinforces security, a high stakes, double edged sword. Building a quantum computer that can outperform classical machines on practical tasks demands controlling qubits better than ever before. Qubits must be isolated from noise, requiring cryogenic temperatures just millikelvins above absolute zero. The complexity and expense of this environment are tremendous. The specialized refrigeration units, vibration, isolation, electromagnetic shielding, these setups can fill entire rooms and cost millions. Moreover, scaling beyond a handful of qubits to the thousands or millions needed for full error correction is a colossal challenge. Researchers explore exotic particles like Majorana fermions to create more stable qubits. Microsoft's bet on topological qubits, though set back by controversies over experimental results, shows that nothing is off the table. Some algorithms that promised exponential speedups may turn out less effective in practice. Quantum decoherence, massive overheads for error correction and engineering constraints remain formidable. Yet steady progress is undeniable. Quantum volumes increase yearly. Governments pledge funding. Investment flows into quantum startups. Incremental achievements like surpassing certain classical benchmarks or performing specialized tasks efficiently signal we are on a trajectory of discovery. In the foreseeable future, quantum computers may coexist with classical supercomputers, each handling tasks suited to their strengths. A hybrid era might emerge. Classical systems manage general workloads while outsourcing specific high complexity subproblems to quantum coprocessors. Much like GPUs accelerated AI workloads, quantum processors could accelerate certain domain-specific computations. As research pushes forward, error rates will drop, qubit counts will rise, and perhaps one day we will have universal, fault-tolerant quantum computers capable of unimaginable feats. Quantum computing stands as a testament to human ingenuity and curiosity. It represents our drive to harness the most elusive principles of the universe to solve the unsolvable. We have only begun to scratch the surface, and the journey ahead will be long and challenging. But if we succeed, the doors we open could reshape our understanding of computation, security, science, and the limits of human achievement. The quantum horizon awaits. Are we ready to step beyond the binary? Technomics.